Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 67. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 8th of May 2013. Beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Walking Dead number 110, with story by Robert Kirkman and art by Charlie Adler and Cliff Rathburn. This month we get Ezekiel versus Michonne. Now, series writer Robert Kirkman was on Conan recently and talked about the popularity of the Walking Dead products. My wife's a big fan of the show. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't miss it for the world. She had to come. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah she she seemed uh, enthusiastic to be here. Uh, is she? You said she's a fan of this show. Is she a huge Walking Dead fan of the Walking Dead show? Uh, you know, it's kind of strange. She's not that big of a fan. Uh, she's my wife. I love her. Uh, we'll be married for a hundred years. But uh, you know, she never read the comics. Can't stand the comics. Uh, often tells that's me that's what you do. That's she, your life's work. <laughs> And your wife's like, eh, not so much. She's like, you know, this helps me buy groceries, but other than that, not so much. Wow. But she said, but she likes this show, and that's the yes. important thing. Yes. Uh, so you win. I win. You win. Again, I win. Uh, okay, nothing short of zombie mania in this country. Uh, the Walking Dead, uh, as I said, congratulations are in order. Hugely successful, and it just seems to grow and grow and grow. There are Walking Dead paraphernalia. Uh, all over the place. A little I mean, bit of, you, you, you know, can lunch buy boxes and stuff. Lunch yeah. boxes. What else can you get? Lots of stuff. There's uh, we got T-shirts. Uh, we got lunch boxes. Uh, there's action figures, video games. So there are kids opening lunch boxes at school uh -huh. that have decaying dead faces on them. I'm not gonna. I, it's a little strange. It's a little right. strange, but uh, they seem to enjoy it. So who am I to deny them a Walking Dead lunchbox? I yeah. Don't even know. There's also, uh, what have you turned down? They, there must have been people that have approached you with a product that they want to put Walking Dead on, and you've said, you know what, that crosses a line, I can't do it. I like to say I'm a sellout, but I'm not a total sellout. Yeah. Uh, I've been pitched uh, perfume, Walking Dead perfume. That was something that I said. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> smell like the undead. Yeah. Why? Why would someone you're, want that? You're either going to smell like a dead body or a sweaty survivor, which yeah. doesn't sound good to me either way. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I was like, no thanks on that. And then uh, Walking Dead energy drink. That was another big one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they've ever seen a zombie? Uh, I know. Very That's not the way. Yeah. You'll be walking like a zombie in no time. <laughs> I'm not going to drink this. At number two, we've got Star Wars number five. When Princess Leia is caught between two squadrons of TIE fighters, her undercover scouting may be at an end. But Luke Skywalker is doing his best to disobey Leia's orders and to once again save the princess. Time is short and the Empire is closing in. Series writer Brian Wood describes his plans for the series. Quote, the story I'm writing sits in the narrative space between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. It actually starts days after the end of Hope, with a homeless and rather diminished rebel fleet searching for a world upon which to establish a new base. The Empire, also wounded from Yavin, is doing whatever they can to keep the rebels on the defensive. One Imperial officer, a new character called Bircher, seems to have a line on the rebels' plans and is making a habit of deploying squadrons of ties right where the rebels drop out of light speed. Leah is tasked with creating a stealth squadron to figure out who's selling them out to the Empire and why. This is a series heavy on space battles and snub fighter dogfights, a series that gets into the emotional states of our post-Tatooine, post-Aldran, post-Yavin characters who have lost so much yet press on in their fight for freedom. Leah especially, a very young woman with the burden of responsibility as the figurehead of the Rebellion, finds a lot of catharsis behind the stick of an X-Wing. From Yavin to Coruscant to Tatooine to Endor, from the hangars of the Devastator to the command decks of the massive Executor, this is Star Wars I know best, the one that I've known for virtually my entire life. It's a rare honor to receive a job like this, and this fan is giving it all he's got. Close quote. At number three, we've got Avenging Spider-Man number 20, The Chameleon Sanction Part 1 of 2, can Spider-Man keep his secrets while facing off with the secret Avengers? S.H.I.E.L.D. has the chameleon. The superior Spider-Man wants him. Time to break into the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Now, it was recently announced that Avenging Spider-Man will become Superior Spider-Man team-up this summer, and writer Chris Yost explained the transition. Quote, In my heart, when I say team-up for Superior Spider-Man, I probably mean versus. In the latest Avenging issues, we've seen that he has a fairly contentious relationship with most of the heroes he's encountered, and with Superior Spider-Man team-up, that just gets bigger. I think in issue one, he teams up with pretty much the entire Marvel Universe. So you're going to continue to see how Spidey, who up until now has been an incredibly arrogant a-hole, continues to deal with the rest of Marvel after what has happened to his reputation in the first few issues of Superior. Spidey Ox has been acting in his own special way heroically. To me, the joy of writing Avenging has been seeing how other people react to him and also how Doc views these people. He's always looking down his nose at others, even guys like Thor and Hulk, because in the end, he really, truly, in his heart, believes that he is better than all of them. 
with the relaunch, as you'll be seeing in the months to come. Starting in Superior Number 9, Spidey's gone through some changes and will expand his operations. He's going to be the best Spider-Man that's ever been, and he's going to take it to the next level. Superior Spider-Man team-up reflects that. You're going to get bigger stories. Like I said, in the first issue, he teams up with the Marvel Universe, and you'll be seeing him interacting in a much bigger way with everybody. Close quote. He went on to say, quote, I grew up on Marvel Team-Up, and there was always some kind of ongoing story. You'd have these characters come in and out of the bigger story. What we've been trying to do is craft a book that you can pick up at any time and enjoy on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. But if you read it monthly, you'll start to pick up these seeds we're laying for bigger things. There's an ongoing thread throughout the book that will continue from Avenging into Superior Spider-Man Team-Up. All the seeds we've been laying will start exploding, because they're those kinds of seeds. I'm a big fan of the big story. I love Done in Ones, and I've written a number for this book already, but you're going to see the big story as well. If you think it doesn't matter, you're wrong. We've got big stuff coming up, and we'll see it reflected in Superior Spider-Man as well. You'll see some of the fallout from my title go into Superior in the months ahead. Close quote. Speaking of team-ups, in number four, we've got Batman number 20. A strange visitor comes to Gotham City when tragedy delivers the team-up you've been asking for since the start of the New 52. Series writer Scott Snyder explained, quote, Issue 19 and 20 are actually a two-part, more fun mystery. Everything was so grim with Joker and grotesque and gruesome that I was sort of itching to do something that was a smaller, fast-paced action mystery, something that Bruce is doing also to take his mind off of everything. So it's really, in my opinion, it's sort of my ode to the way the animated series worked. It's a fun, fast two-parter, even though it has a bit of grim context because of the Joker storyline and because of Damien. Then in issue number 21, we begin Zero Year, our really, really big next arc, close quote. Now when asked about the issue cover, which features Batman fighting in what appears to be a lot of mud, series artist Greg Capullo said, quote, I love Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. It was my homage to the awesome fight Batman had with the gang leader. Nothing too deep, close quote. He also said regarding the solicit, quote, as for the strange visitor, could be anybody. I'll never tell, close quote. And at number 5, we've got Harbinger number 12. Harbinger Wars Harbinger continues here. Battle weary, the renegades follow Peter Stanchek's strange dreams and visions into the southwest American desert, unsure of what exactly they'll find. Under the duress of constant conflict and led by the words of the bleeding monk, who bleeds but does not die, our band of teens begins to fray. Barely even a cohesive group by the time they reach Las Vegas, Nevada, now rechristened Syot Nation. Here Peter and his crew come face to face with the Harbingers who have escaped from Project Rising Spirit's prison, Harbingers who call themselves Generation Zero. Series writer Joshua Dysart says of the Harbinger Wars, quote, It's no secret that we're unleashing more science upon the world. It's also no secret that the original Harbinger was a bit of a riff on the X-Men. I think that one of the things I've struggled to do is embrace what is fun and cool about the X-Men, but also keep the science limited. It's not a world filled with them. They have to be activated. There's a process that they have to go through, and so it should have a large impact on the world when suddenly a whole handful of them get scattered out into the world, especially when the acquisition of science is a huge part of the game that each of our players are going for. Harada, PRS, and Peter and his renegades all want to acquire science for various reasons. So, in that sense, it really does change the whole game for any Valiant Universe book and the science as a phenomenon. So that is what's going to propel Harbinger far beyond. There's a whole new slew of characters coming. Some of them you know, some of them are riffs on what you saw back in the original Valiant Universe, and many, many of them are brand new, fresh new characters that will define a brand new Valiant Universe that's not entirely dependent on what came before. Close quote. Rounding out the top 10 at number 6, we've got Avengers Assemble number 15 AU, Ultron rules, okay? The Age of Ultron hits Britain, and Captain Britain hits back with a little help from his friends, including a vacation in Captain Marvel. Fighting a guerrilla war in the ruins of London, aggro is a way of life for Avengers UK. But when they might just be the last superheroes left alive, can there still be hope, or is England dreaming? At number 7, we've got Thor, God of Thunder number 8, God Bomb part 2 of 5, Thor in Chains, Gore Transcendent, all hope for divinity lost. As the clock ticks down on one very large bomb, as enslaved gods look to the skies for a savior, enter the Girls of Thunder? At number 8, we've got Uncanny Avengers number 8, Xavier's Dead, now begins the Age of the Apocalypse Twins, now begins Ragnarok, and it's all Thor's fault. Sword Peak Station is attacked by Apocalypse Ship, a celestial fate so shocking, so impossible, it will rock the Marvel Universe to its core. This is it. Ragnarok is now, and not even the Uncanny Avengers can hold it back. At number 9, we've got Batman and Red Hood number 20. The massive fallout from the recent events in Batman Incorporated take Batman to the very limits of his sanity. Will the Red Hood pull him back or push him over the edge? 
And at number 10, we've got X number 1 of 4. The enigmatic vigilante X has shattered Arcadia's criminal triumvirate, the three pigs, and fixed his eye on an even tougher target. But with the police department and the crime establishment teamed up against him, muck-racking blogger Lee Ferguson may be X's only ally. The brutal story of Dark Horse's bloodies hero begins anew. Swierzynski and Naguin relaunch the classic Dark Horse vigilante. X is the letter of the law. For the best of the rest this week from DC, we've got Batman Death by Design graphic novel. In this original graphic novel from superstar writer-designer Chip Kidd and artist Dave Taylor, Gotham City is undergoing one of the most expansive construction booms in its history. The most prestigious architects from across the globe have buildings in various phases of completion all over town. As chairman of the Gotham Landmarks Commission, Bruce Wayne has been a key part of this boom, which signals a golden age of architectural ingenuity for the city. And then the explosions begin. All manner of design-related malfunctions, faulty crane calculations, sturdy materials suddenly collapsing, software glitches, walkways giving way, and more cause casualties across the city. This bizarre string of seemingly random catastrophes threatens to bring down the whole construction industry. Fingers are pointed as Batman must somehow solve the problem and find whoever is behind it all. Next, we've got Justice League of America number 3. A new secret society is forming, but which of its members has the power to attack the Justice League from within? We've also got Katana number 4. Devastated by the horrifying aftermath of last issue's battle with Killer Croc, Katana struggles to set things right against impossible odds. We've also got Ravagers number 12. Final issue. As Caitlin and Rose deal with the shocking revelation about their origins, Deathstroke takes down the remaining Ravagers. This is the end. And we've got Suicide Squad number 20, new team members, new direction, new creative team. After the shocking events of issue 19, the team returns to Belle Reve to lick its wounds and bury their dead. But when they find out what's waiting for them at the prison, they'll wish they were back out in the field. Plus, who are the two killers Amanda Waller has recruited to shake things up, and what are their true motives for joining the team? Next, we've got Superboy number 20, Blood and Steel, begins as the Teen of Steel decides it's time to become more proactive in his battle against evil. But how far will he go before he crossed the line? And we've got Team 7 number 8, final issue, revealed what broke Team 7 apart and set Black Canary, Amanda Waller, Deathstroke, and Majestic on the rocky road they travel today. From Marvel, we've got Alpha Big Time number 4 of 5. Alpha and Thor team up to have a totally excellent adventure. Superior Spider-Man informs Andy that his actions have consequences, whatever that means. Josh Fialkov and Nuno Plotti continue the greatest story of the greatest superhero ever known. Next, we've got Avengers number 11, Wake the Dragon. As Shang-Chi battles an ancient enemy, the Avengers hang out in Hong Kong's swankiest casino. Captain Marvel, Black Widow, and Spider-Woman find out it doesn't pay to gamble in the spy business. Cannonball and Sunspot play craps with a bunch of AIM agents and win. We've also got Avengers Arena number 9, Secrets Explode and Alliances Shatter and Game On Part 2 of 5. Apex, the mean girl you love to hate, makes her move. Next, we've got Fearless Defenders number 4, Come for the banter, stay for the surprises. Everything Valkyrie knows about her origin is wrong, and Caroline Le Fay unleashes her doom maidens upon the world. We've also got Ultimate Comics The Ultimates number 24, the pulse-pounding finale of Reconstruction, Ultimates vs. West Coast Ultimates, Can America Survive a Superpowered Battle Royale, a momentous decision changes the Ultimates and the country forever. Next, we've got Uncanny X-Force number 4, the first arc comes to a crazy climactic end. What have Phantom X and Cluster been up to while Bishop has been killing the rest of X-Force? And we've got Wolverine number 3, guest starring Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. How will Logan take down a foe with no permanent body to slash and claw? And what does the Watcher have to do with all of this? From IDW, we've got Star Trek number 20. The all-new origin stories of the Enterprise crew conclude with this special issue that focuses on two Trek stalwarts, Sulu and Chekhov. Witness their first meeting at Starfleet Academy and learn how their paths intertwined all the way to the bridge of the Enterprise. Overseen by Trek writer-producer Roberto Orsi, this issue sets the stage for Sulu and Chekhov's new adventures in the blockbuster film sequel. And from Valiant, we've got Archer and Armstrong number zero, the true story of the epic fail of Gilgamesh. Original series artist and Harbinger War superstar Clayton Henry returns to tell a tale of the early days of the man known as Armstrong. How early? How's ancient Ur sound? For the first time, the 100% true story behind the epic of Gilgamesh can be told. A tale of three warrior brothers, the Annie Pata, or as you know them, Armstrong, the Eternal Warrior, and Time Walker, on a quest to the mysterious faraway to bring back its immortal boon. What they find is a lost land full of danger, excitement, and the greatest secret of the Valiant Universe. Plus, this issue tees up the next arc of Archer and Armstrong beginning this June in issue number 10. 
Out in trades this week, we've got Avengers vs. X-Men Companion hardcover, every AVX tie-in collected in one massive volume. When Captain America declares war on the X-Men, how will Generation Hope and the Avengers Academy react to their mentor's actions? As the secret Avengers battle the Phoenix Force in space, Iron Fist discovers the connection between Kun Lun and Hope Summers. And when the Avengers try to secure the Jean Grey school, Wolverine must decide where his loyalties lie. But as the Phoenix Force arrives, tipping the scale of battle, the Avengers and X-Men realize the stakes are higher than they knew, and the fate of the Earth is in their hands. Collects Avengers Academy number 29 to 33, Secret Avengers number 26 to 28, Avengers 25 to 30, New Avengers 24 to 30, X-Men Legacy 266 to 270, Wolverine and the X-Men 9 through 16 and 18, AVX Consequences 1 through 5, Uncanny X-Men number 11 to 20, and A-Babies vs. X-Babies number 1. We've also got Avenging Spider-Man Threats and Menaces trade paperback. It's web-slinging action as you like it as Spider-Man faces a phalanx of fearsome foes. Horizon Labs takes a field trip to the Savage Land, but when a horde of super-powered lizards attacks, it's up to Spider-Man, Devil Dinosaur, and Moon Boy to save the day. Spidey goes toe-to-toe with the Thing in a mighty mind-controlled melee. When Spider-Man finds himself stuck in a world where Peter Parker never existed, it's the Avengers to the rescue. When Spider-Man finds Blade enslaved in an underground undead fighting league, the webhead must fight the vampire hunter for his very life. Who is the Spider-Man impersonator? Collects Avenging Spider-Man 14 and 15 in Annual Number 1, Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 39, Spider-Man vs. Vampires, and material from Amazing Spider-Man Number 692. And last, we've got Essential Defenders Volume 7 trade paperback. The age of the new Defenders begins here. The Beast assembles the infamous non-team into a real supergroup featuring members both old and new, from Gargoyle and Valkyrie to fellow ex-X-Men, Iceman and Angel. And now the newly focused heroes must face some of their greatest challenges. Can the Defenders, Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. stop the Secret Empire's Professor Power before he takes revenge on Professor X and starts World War III? Plus, Iceman takes on the villainous Void in a time-traveling existential adventure. Beast and Dazzler vs. Doctor Doom and a Mutant Fight Club, The Menace of Manslaughter, The Power of Odin, The Redemption of Moondragon, The Attack of Frogman and Walrus, and more. Collects Defenders number 126 to 139, Iceman 1 through 4, and Beauty and the Beast number 1 through 4. Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available. I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with all the top independent publishers. You can find them all on my YouTube channel at he's got issues.com. And we'll also have links up on the League of Nerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, or Twitter. You can find links to everything at he's got issues.com and a reminder that both he's got issues and the league of nerds are proud members of the comics podcast network so until next week i'm john cooney and i've got issues